All right, and we're here. Uh, I'm recording this after NFL Week 1. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the NFL. I did this for college football. I love talking sports. So at the end of the day, kind of just wanted to talk about some of the Week 1 games. I've got a bunch of notes actually right here. I'm going to kind of lean this way and just look at it this way. Yeah, obviously there was a lot going on. I'm actually going to talk a lot about the teams that lost. I think I'm just going to kind of talk about how these teams can avoid to lose their second straight game. Um, we're going to start with a Thursday night game, the Ravens. Ravens were this close, this close to not losing to the Chiefs. But at the end of the day, they have to get Derrick Henry in rhythm. He only averaged 3.5 yards per carry. He was outpaced by Lamar Jackson, which is fine. But you brought him in for a reason, right? They need to lean on him. He's a volume back who gets better as the game goes on. Unlocking his potential raises their ceiling significantly. So that's what they got to do. For the Packers, they have to protect their quarterback better. Jordan Love getting hurt, that was a huge thing for the Packers. He was getting drilled by the Eagles' D-line. They have to keep Malik Willis upright. If they want to remain in the hunt, they have to keep him healthy as well as rely on the defense and the run game headlined by Josh Jacobs. They cannot afford to play from behind. Got some other quick ones for the Panthers. They just need to keep moving forward. This is Bryce Young's second season. He has to continue to show signs. You just have to continue to focus on developing him. That is pretty much your only priority this season is can we develop Bryce Young and see if he's really the guy. For the Giants, you know Daniel Jones is not your guy. He's got to go. Is Drew Locke that guy? Probably not. But who knows? At this point, honestly, you probably just give him the keys at least for now, and just see. The Bengals just need to knock the rust off. They couldn't get anything to go offensively. And at the end of the day, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow were completely out of sync the entire game. They've started slow the last six seasons. In their first two games of the last six seasons, obviously not including the game that has yet to be played, they're 1-10. in 10. So, I mean, at the end of the day, this is not uncommon for them to lose a lot of these first two games. They played sloppy. Turnovers were an issue. The defense played fine, but the offense needs to continue to figure it out. The Falcons have to do a better job getting Kirk Cousins in a rhythm early. He's coming off a torn Achilles. He's like 38. He looked super mobile. He was sacked twice. Obviously, the Steelers' defense is nothing to scoff at. And he's not in sync with any of the pass catchers on the roster. And it was obvious, especially on that interception of Drake London. Colts have to do a better job of stopping the run. Allowing 213 yards on 40 carries, that's over five yards a carry, is unreal. Mixon is good. He's a little older, but he's still good. But that's the third most yards he's ever had. So that was a career game for Joe Mixon. You want to win games, you have to do a better job stopping the run. The Cardinals need to get Marvin Harrison involved a lot more. Three targets, only one catch is unacceptable. I don't care how you slice it. The fact that he was wide open down the field while Kyler Murray danced around in the pocket for six seconds is unreal. That's Kyler. I know he had that stupid-ass quote where he said it's not his job. It is his job. It's also the coach's job. You have to scheme him open. Kyler's got to look his way. They just have to do more. They have to, whether it's, Like I said, whether it's scheming for him, whether it's Kyler, I don't know, but he needs to get the ball more. The Titans, I'm glad they lost. They need to avoid turnovers. Will Levis, trying to avoid a sack and make a play, had the meme of the year, and it cost him the game. But even before that, he had a fumble that was recovered by the Bears. They also had a punt blocked for a touchdown. Chicago only had one turnover to the Titans three. That's the difference in that game. The Jaguars need to be more disciplined. They're up 17-7, to and then Travis Etienne fumbles at the goal line. That would have sealed the game, and instead, the Jaguars strike. They have a huge big play to Tyree Kill, and that swings the entire momentum of the game. You want to win games against good teams, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. For the Broncos, you need to be able to support Bo Nix at a higher level. I understand Bo Nix really didn't do much to help you, but at the end of the day, Jaleel McLaughlin, 27 yards on 10 carries, and Javante Williams, 23 yards on 8 carries, that's less than 3 yards per carry. That's disgustingly bad. Audrey Estime did have 14 yards on 2 carries, but obviously 2 carries is nothing. The run game absolutely has to be better if they want to continue to win games. The Raiders just need to coach better, right? Antonio Pierce, to me, cost him that game with that call in the fourth quarter. You're fourth and one in Chargers territory. You do pin them within the 10, but you're down six in the fourth quarter on the other side of the 50. You got to go for that. Obviously, you pin them inside the 10, like I just mentioned, but the Chargers ripped off a 92-yard drive and go up 12. That game's over. The Browns have to play to Deshaun Watson's strength more. Obviously, you don't even know if he's going to play anymore. But if he does, he clearly doesn't look like he has much zip downfield. So you pretty much have to understand, okay, we got to run the ball. we got to rely on our defense. And we have to kind of pass the, using these short, medium routes and kind of just nickel and dime our way down the field. For the commanders, they need to let Jaden Daniels throw the ball more. He showed high-level accuracy in their game, and he needs to have more than 24 passing attempts going forward. And for the Rams, they have to get their backup running backs involved. No carries for Blake Corum after using a third-round pick on him is actually unacceptable. And only two to Ronnie Rivers, but he did average eight yards per carry. That's incredible. Kyron Williams got less than three yards per carry on 18 carries. Something needed to give. They were playing from behind, so I understand they weren't really running the ball as much. But you, if you're going to give a third-round pick for Blake Corum, you have to use him. For me... We just talked about all those games. We have to talk about the Monday night game. The Jets, I mean, there's really not much to say about it. Shanahan kind of outcoached 
Robert Sala kind of is an understatement. He outcoached the hell out of Robert Sala. Aaron Rodgers looked fine. Offense looked okay. The Niners are just, they're just so good. They're going to win the NFC. I'd be shocked if they didn't. They would probably need a couple of injuries, if we're being honest, or a fluke game in the playoffs. Even without CMC, right? The offense, it didn't, it didn't even look like it mattered, which is crazy to say out loud. It's crazy to say out loud. I mean, to me, they're my favorite in the NFC. I don't think it's really even close. I don't think there's a team that has anything like it. In the AFC, obviously, I think the Chiefs are the cream of the crop. They have, again, two of the top five players in football. The Dolphins didn't really look that good, but then, damn it, they came out of nowhere. The Dolphins, to me, they're always this hot and cold team. They start off really good in September, um, in October, kind of falter down the stretch. I don't think they're going to be the Chiefs, but I think, to me, they're a team that has the biggest chance to do so. And I think that's really weird because a lot of people would say, you know, maybe Baltimore, maybe Buffalo, obviously, or maybe even Cincinnati. But to me, the Dolphins are that team. And yeah, I don't really know what else I'm going to say. Obviously, I think the Chiefs are going to play the Niners in the Super Bowl based on what I just said. I think the Chiefs probably win again. A third straight Super Bowl for the Chiefs, bro, that would be unreal. But yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to try something different. I didn't talk about this for college football. I was a lot more in tune with college football this week. I was flying back, um, so I didn't get to see as much of the NFL games. Just kind of a little bit of box stat watching, a lot of highlight watching. I did catch the Thursday and the Monday night games and some of the Sunday games, but um, just wanted to try this out. Might do it again. Might make a second channel to do this more consistently because um, these don't really take me that much time and I love just yapping about sports. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, make sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Let's find out if they're right.